Hi people, welcome back. My name is Ran. I share content about electric vehicles, especially from the perspective of an actual new ET5 user. So today I'm going to take you to the details of the third generation power swap stations. To start with, I wanted to bring you some of the fundamentals of the first two generations of the battery swap station. The first generation was built a few years ago, and there's only about 180 units installed all over the country. But there's a problem with the first generation is that um, you can't stay in the car. You have to get out of the car and there's supposed to be one person from NEO as an operator on site to help you with the swapping. The swapping process, it's automatic. It's just that the preparation step is not very uh, automatic. And the whole process will be um, about over, over five minutes to finish. And I would say, based on my experience, that would be six minutes or more. And these kind of station only contains five batteries in total. So it's not the very, I do believe it's more like a prototype of this concept swapping battery. And I actually barely used this one, uh, the first generation, because I do have uh, sufficient access to the second and third generation near where I live. And then there is the second generation. The very good thing about second generation is that the preparation step, the parking and the swapping are both automatic right now. So it's a complete automatic process of swapping the battery. And right now, I believe all over the country, there are about a thousand at a hundred units installed. So it's one of the main stations that you can access. And the maximum of the numbers uh, of the batteries has goes up to 13 units instead of five, comparing with the first generation. So more batteries, fully automatic, that will be considered as the um, improvement of the second generation. If you want to know more details about the how you swap the battery in the second generation, you can click on the video that I did previously. I'm demonstrating the whole process of swapping the battery in the second generation in a very intuitive way. And then there's a third generation power station. In March 28th, 2023, NEO launched officially the third generation power swap station, and they made a decision of constructing over a thousand uh, third generation stations all over the country in just one year and actually they succeeded. Till today they are in total 2,435 installed power stations all over the country available and I believe among them the third generation will be have a number over a thousand and a hundred units. If you look at the specs let's say hardware you can find out there were two obvious differences. The first one is that uh, the, the amount of batteries that the third generation swap station can store goes up to 21 batteries instead of 30 batteries in the second generation. So right now it has a larger capacity of storing more batteries. The second difference would be that the station will be having LiDAR. I do believe two units LiDAR and two chips inside. The chips are actually, I do remember the name, it's called NVIDIA Orin X. So, and that chip gives an output of approximately 508 tops so right now it's a computing technology and the station has the capacity to support 408 swaps per day instead of uh, 312 swaps in the second generation. And then there will be chargers accompanying with the station. There will be four, a minimum four chargers, super fast chargers accompanying with the station. But you can swap the station, you can swap the battery in the station. Why do you need a fast chargers? I'm going to explain the details in four sections so that you can have a better understanding of the upgrades. The first one will be shortened swapping time by one minute. But how? Second, auto swapping without human intervention, especially on highway. Third, ultra fast chargers. But you can swap the battery in the station. Why do you need to charge it? What's that even for? Fourth, the concept of power reservoir. Neo claimed that the battery swap in the third generation can be shortened by one minute by absorbing a new, sta uh, new three-station collaborative operation mechanism um, that will lead to a battery swap action and self-test actions can be performed simultaneously. Let's just put it in a very simple way. In, a, in the second generation, the process of, of swapping the battery will be linear and one-directional. So when the old battery has been withdrawn, put it back to the chamber, the station will be assigned a new battery, goes back, underneath your car and be inserted up your car, right? The whole process is linear and one directional, but in the third generation will be a bit different. And when the auto parking process initiated, 
there will be a new battery already signed, assigned and get ready underneath your car. And so the process of withdrawing the battery and put the new battery back to your car will be a little bit like overlapping. So there will be no time loss in terms of the battery transfer. So thus shorten the whole process of swapping the battery. For any steps in the process of swapping that doesn't have conflicts, they will do that in the meantime. The second thing I wish to talk about is the battery swapping without human intervention uh, on the highways. First of all, there are over 800 power swap stations are installed in the highways, specifically in the service point on highways. So when you're driving across cities, across provinces, you'll be using this kind of uh, power station on the highways, on the service point to swap the battery. And in the second generation, it is the second generation, when you're driving on the highway and you want to, and your car is on the low battery condition, you wanted to swap the battery, you have to reserve anything, you have to reserve everything before arriving to the station. You have to do that manually. But in the third generation, it will be a very different case because the third generation will be having two chips and the light are integrated. That make power station a computer, you may say. So the power station can be interacting and communicating with your electric vehicle all the time. So when you are driving a car on the highway in a piloting mode and the station, power station is sensed that your car is under low battery. So it will lead your car to drive itself to the parking lot of the power station to complete the power swapping process. Everything automatically. You don't have to do anything. The whole process will be very seamless. You don't have to do, do it manually. So creating a fully automatic, seamless power swapping experience on the highways. The third will be the ultra-fast 500 kilowatt chargers. These are not ordinary chargers. These are super fast chargers. And these are actually 800 volt built. But you have to be aware that all the new car, new electric vehicles right now are 400 volt built. So these chargers are technically speaking now for everyone. They're open for all the electric vehicles in the market. You don't, you don't really have to be a new user. And they're building these chargers for the future. They also newly designed these so-called liquid cooling charging cable, make it a very light, lightweight and very easy to handle. For those who've been using chargers to charge your electric vehicle, you feel that the fast charging cable are always very heavy and bulky, right? So this would be a new um, design optimization to make everything lighter and easier. But why building these chargers? Neo is a name, it's an electric vehicle brand that's been known for swapping technology. The swapping battery is a, it's a core of the promotion, right? So, but they're building all these very expensive and very high-end chargers for everyone that the new customers probably don't use that much. So what's the point of investing that much in building these very expensive high-end chargers? That will lead to the fourth concept. What is the concept? It is called the power reservoir concept, as I concluded. We now know that there are 21 batteries stored inside of the power station, a third generation power station. 21 batteries will be given a huge amount of power. And imagine this, uh, I do believe that there's a peak time and um, off peak electricity. So the, the price of the electricity has been fluctuating all the time. During daytime, it could be more expensive and at night, off peak, it could be cheaper. Imagine this, the power station will charge all the battery to full in advance and during daytime when the other electric vehicle been using the chargers to charge their car, they are literally been using the electricity stored during nighttime. So there will be a margin out of the process. Let me give you one example. Right here, the off-peak time, the electricity costs will be 0.3 yuan per kilowatt hour and the peak time it goes up to 1.3 to 1.5 yuan per kilowatt hour. We are talking about four to five times difference. That's a huge amount of difference. What are we talking about is mainly about the commercial part of how to get some margin out of the electricity difference uh, with the capacity of storage in a power station, right? But that's the, just a very practical commercial part that we can looking forward to right now, we can see right now. But I do believe there's something more. Imagine, during the daytime, there will be a rush hour that everybody is using, everybody is occupying the charging station, charging the electric vehicle, right? So all the chargers are plugged in, but nobody's getting a very good speed because the output has been evened. 
everybody can only get an average speed to charge the car because there's a limit, maximum limit of the grid system. But under this condition, let's say the power station from NEO can give in the chargers an additional boost because they are batteries, they are powers stored inside of the batteries in the power station. That extra boost can give you an additional voltage, additional speed to charge the car. That would be a co-walking between the grid system and the power station. That being said, the power stations and the grid system are working together to making the performance of the superchargers more stable and efficient. The reserve capacity of 21 batteries also greatly improves the redundancy limit of the battery swap when facing peak loads. I want you to think about the connections of the power swap station with the grid system. It's more like a reservoir, water reservoir with a water supply system. Imagine you have a huge amount of power swap station dotted and distributed all across the country in different communities, industrial zones, and commercial regions. Whenever there is a uh, electricity failure, let's say, in a shopping mall, the power swapping station can be instantly helping and supplying the power to the shopping mall, right? So there will be a co-working between the grid system in general and the power stations distributed everywhere. I don't know what this direction will go, but I feel very exciting that the co-working between the power stations and the national grid system, that the stations, when they reach to a certain scale, it can participate in the regulations of the power grid, and that will make a huge difference for everything. And we're looking forward to that. Okay, enough for the talks. I'll just take you to the third generation to experience that swapping process intuitively. Let's go. So right now we are in the third generation battery swap station. We're gonna have to do a, um, a test swap, but there's a person in front of us who's been swapping the battery right now, so we have to wait uh, one minute till I'm finished. We are in the parking lot with many chargers as well. As you can see right here, these are the exclusive charger of um, Zika. Okay, he's coming up. It's up to now. Let's just dive into the square box. Let's go. I'm not really using my hand to touch the steering wheel. I am not really using any um, using my foot for any of the pedals either. So it's automatic. Start. Preparing. Please wait. Power swap is about to start. During this time, vehicle may shake and make noise. This is normal. Do not open any door, shift gears, or press brake pedal. So the first step, I do feel like it's pretty identical. There's no significant um, like faster pace, but it's all the same. It says removing battery right now. So while removing the battery, I do believe the station will be given a new battery underneath to get ready, like simultaneously. That's the difference with the second generation. So it could um, fasten, it could make it faster.
I don't know if you can hear the noise. And the funny thing is that I the AC is still on. So uh, the car got OTA upgraded. I do remember that previously, um, when you are in the process of swapping the battery, all the electronics are down. So including the Nomi, the AC, everything will be shut. But right now, you can feel that after the OTA upgrade, the Nomi is still there and the AC is on as well. Right now it says exchanging battery. Sorry for the odd setup I have with my cell phone and the handle. I'm using a drone to get a better upper view of the uh, swapping. So it's pretty strange I'm handling this. Installing battery. The car has been lifted up a little bit. I do feel like it's being lifted. You see that? I don't know if it's literally lifted up. It's just a mechanism action. I don't know. But as a claim that there's no lifting up and on the papers. A vehicle self-inspection. I believe it's done. So it's a process of inspecting electronics now. Okay, finished. Now we have 92% in the 516 kilometers range. Okay, let's move out. On June 13th, just a few days ago, New launched the four generation power swap stations. Until today, there are only two available and installed all across the country. One is about 150 kilometers from where I live. So I'm thinking about visiting there and bring you the most fresh insights and user experience of that one. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. That will be today's video. Like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.